Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I am an Associate Minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled Confidence in God's Shepherding. The devotional reading comes from the Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10, and our background scripture for our lesson is the entire Psalms 23 and John, the 10th chapter, verses 11 to 14. In the rented text, we will cover the entire Psalms 23. And the main thought of the memory verse is Psalms 23 and 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Much like last week's lesson, David uses that word, I, my, making it personal. He's talking about, yes, he's talking about Christian, but he he's writing this song, this song about his confidence that God going to lead him in the right path. And this is confidence in sharing. Confidence in God's shepherding. And we have to have confidence that God is also the shepherd that we should follow. Psalm 23, written by David himself about the good shepherd. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. David writes of God's shepherding, his restoration, his protection, his provision, his election, his abundance, and the promise, future for all of God's children. Shepherding was a common analogy used in ancient times, especially in describing kings and how they protected and provided for their people. Remember, David was a shepherd himself, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11, and knew exactly what it took to be a good one. Remember, when Samuel went to Jesse, David's daddy. All the sons, all of them, the oil wouldn't come out. When he said, go get the Rudy one, he said, you got another son? He said, yeah, he's the Rudy boy. He's down there taking care of the sheep. He said, bring him to me. That's when the oil came out of the valley. God can use anybody to do anything that he wants to do. And even to the point, David knew that God was a good shepherd. And, in, and even to the point, a shepherd to risking his own life for the sake of the flock. But our God was so good, he didn't risk his life he gave his life in the person of his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. 1 Samuel 17, verses 34 to 37. David wants the shepherd again, Psalm 78, 
verses 70 to 72. Reverse his role by stating God is his shepherd as used throughout the Old Testament. Genesis 49 and 24, Psalms 28 and 9, Isaiah 40 and 11. David speaks of the individual sheep, which would be strange for a shepherd to have, a lone sheep. But David is focused on his relationship between one sheep himself and the shepherd, God. David, being a shepherd, knew sheep are helpless and they can't protect or provide for themselves. And, and if the shepherd cares for the sheep, how much more will God do for his people? This, this is confidence. That's regardless of what he needs. God will provide Deuteronomy 2 and 7, 8 and 9, Psalms 84 and 11. But a bad shepherd, Ezekiel 34, 1 through 16, Jude 12. But God is always near, never distance, John 10, 7 through 16, 1 Peter 2 and 25, always present, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me too. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. Green pastures refer to abundance of land in Canaan to feed the flock, which the shepherd had to constantly search for due to the fact that they experienced no or little rainfall for five months of the year. Genesis 13, 5 to 6. Genesis 37, 12 through 17. Sheep are at ease when they are provided rest alongside their food. A sheep can survive with no water for approximately seven days, but will drink as much as they can when given the opportunity. Still waters was unusual since flowing water or rivers or streams were preferred to meet the people's needs. Psalms 36 and 8, Psalms 46 and 4, Revelation 7 and 17. Shepherds lead, not drive their flocks, showing love and care and direction as God did for the Israelites, the Israelites then during the Exodus. And as he does for us today, Exodus 13, 21 to 22. The psalmist is at a total rest because God has provided for all his physical and non-physical needs. David ain't waiting to get it. It's done. Verse 3, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. He's not waiting. It's, it's done. It's getting done right now. God is a faithful and righteous shepherd and leads us only to the right path, even when we come to the forks in the road. Because he can lead no other way, because he's a righteous God. Of course, we wish there were no dark valleys in our lives, but that won't happen until Jesus returns. But we have the promise of God present at all times. No, never alone. You're not alone. Matthews 28 and 20, John 14, 16 and 17, Hebrews 13 and 5. I'll never leave you nor forsake you, which removes our fears or should remove our fears of evil because God is stronger than any evil that we may encounter in life. Psalms 49, 5 to 6, Psalms 49, 17. And here, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David is, he, read these Psalms, 
You got to make them personal to you, just like David wrote them personal. The shepherd has his tool. It's called a rod or a scepter, a sign of authority, and, and can be used to inflict pain or punishment. Psalms 2 and 20 and 9, Psalms 89 and 32, and a staff or a walking stick, a cane, which can also be used to ward off attackers. Yes, because sheep are defenseless animals. Though sheep don't dine at tables, David changes the imagery from God being a shepherd to one of a gracious host. As a king who prepares fine meals for many people and that his enemies can do nothing about. First Kings 4 and 27. Because of God's protection and provision, this ha, bridge with verse 4 gives the image of a traveler who in those was constantly in danger. In those days was constantly in danger while on the road. Even Jesus spoke of these dangers. The Good Samaritan, when the Luke 10 and 30, when the traveler got roughed up on the road and the Good Samaritan took care of him, that Jesus talked about traveling on the roads to Jericho and how dangerous it was in those days to travel. And to this traveler, he's a, wild, a weary traveler. He's arriving weary to a waiting feast. Verse five, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Me, my, my, in the same verse. Host honors their guests by anointing their head with oil. Psalms 45 and 7, Psalms 92 and 10, which was soothing and refreshing for a weary, a, a weary traveler. The oil would have various scents in it, jasmine, violet, or whatever other scents they might have had in those times. The sense a twofold purpose. One, recognizing David's mind, anointing to be king, over Israel, 1 Samuel 16 and 3, and 1 Samuel 16, 12 to 13. And secondly, God continuous anointing in spirit. David continues to talk of God as a gracious host by giving a large cup of wine to him. Jeremiah 35, 1 to 5. David is satisfied and it is equivalent to the water referred to in Psalms 23 and 2. Just, just as dangers or has or hardships, Dave, David pursued. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. So just as dangers or hardship had pursued David throughout his life, Psalms 23, 4 to 5, God's goodness and mercy will pursue even more than death and evil. David has shared a meal with God and expects to stay there forever. This isn't a physical house because God has no temple during David's life because God would not allow him to build it. Second Samuel 7, verse 1 through 7, his son Solomon was the chosen one. David is not speaking of an enemy, an earthly house, but God's heavenly dwelling. You know, Psalms 23 speaks to God as a shepherd and host, being ever caring and thoughtful toward us, his people. God loves us unconditionally and can always be trusted that he is always with us. We can meditate on this daily to know God will provide all our needs. God is righteous and faithful 
Lastly, not only are we pursuing God, but God is pursuing us like no earthly shepherd could ever do. Because Jesus is Lord and good shepherd, John 10, 14 through 15, gave his life for us. No earthly shepherd would be willing to do this. God has provided, God is provided, and God will provide for us. On behalf of our pastor, the Greater Plains Missionary Baptist Church, again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. Thank God.